Hi everyone. In this video, we're going to do a side-by-side -side comparison of two models of momentum. One being the standard physics textbook definition of momentum, the model first described by Isaac Newton. And the other will be an alternative view of momentum that has been presented by a small but vocal group of individuals in the comment section of some of my videos. If you're not familiar with some of these claims, that's okay. I will try to present their model of momentum as accurately as I can, not presenting a straw man argument. Uh, hopefully all of these statements that I will make about their model they would agree with. And then we can use this as a test case for comparing two models of a physical phenomenon and find ways to experimentally test the points where these two models differ. So we can identify which one is able to make accurate predictions of how different physical systems will work. So we're going to start by reviewing the standard textbook definition of momentum and let's go right back to the source, Isaac Newton's key work, the Principia. I'm going to do a bit of a deeper dive into this because the proponents of this alternative model that we'll be discussing later on claims that theirs is the model that Newton used. And this is simply not the case, as we'll see. There are fundamental disagreements with how uh, this alternative model uses momentum. I'm going to leave a link to the English translation of Newton's Principia in the description, along with page numbers uh, for some of these excerpts, so you can check this out yourself. So, what did Newton say about momentum? Well, first, there were a couple of definitions. So let's talk about some of these definitions first. So again, this is from uh, the Mathematical Principles of Natural Philosophy by Isaac Newton, also known as the Principia. And the definition of momentum, it comes in two parts. First, the quantity of matter is the measure of the same arising from its density and bulk conjunctly. Uh, basically, density times volume, that gives you mass. So that when he says quantity of matter, he's talking about what we just call the mass of an object. And then definition two, the quantity of motion, this is what Newton calls momentum, the quantity of motion is the measure of the same arising from the velocity and the quantity of matter conjunctly. So momentum is velocity times that quantity of matter, the mass. So mass times velocity. This is Newton's definition of what momentum is. So momentum, Newton's definition of momentum, is just the momentum is the mass of the object times its velocity. But there's a couple of important points about this and a couple of properties about this that are especially highlighted when we hear what Newton has to say about conservation of momentum. And this is in Corollary 3. So uh, we've got corollary through here. Again, you can check to make sure that I'm not uh, misrepresenting this at all. Uh, I've written it on here, so let's kind of go through this. The quantity of motion, momentum, which is collected by taking the sum of the motions directed in the same parts and the difference of those that are directed in contrary parts suffers no change from the action of the bodies among themselves. This is Newton's statement about conservation of momentum. And let's dissect this a little bit. Okay. When we're talking about momentum and the momentum of a system of multiple objects, if I have two objects, and let's say we've got objects, uh, object one and object two, and let's say we've got the momentum of object one and the momentum of object two, if those momentas are going in the same direction, we add those momentas. If those objects, let's say this is object one with a certain amount of momentum, and this is object two with some momentum going in the opposite direction, then I subtract the magnitudes of those momentas. Okay. In Newton's model, we're saying we're taking the sum of the motions, the momenta, directed towards the same parts, moving in the same direction, and the difference of those that are directed in to contrary parts, going in opposite directions. Okay. So when we talk about momentum in Newton's model, in the standard physics textbook definition, direction matters. Okay. Momentum is also only conserved when we only have internal forces acting on the system. That's the suffers no change from the action of bodies amongst themselves. 
if I have two objects that are moving in two different directions and they slam into each other, so let's say it's object one and object two, if object one is running into object two, well, by Newton's third law, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. If object one slams into object two, object two is pushing back on object one with the same amount of force, and there will be a transfer of momentum. We can change the direction of object one, and we can change the direction of object two. So each one individually goes through a change in momentum, but the system, if I add together those momentas, again, direction matters, so we have to learn how to add momentas that are going in different directions, then the total momentum of that system will be conserved. Again, the quantity of motion suffers no change from the action of bodies among themselves. If it's just objects interacting with each other, that system will keep the same total momentum. So momentum is conserved when there are only internal forces acting on the system. In the following discussion from the corollary, Newton gives some specific exa examples. So, thus, if a spherical body A with two parts of velocity is triple that of a spherical body B, well, let's say that object A, uh, let's say it's got two parts of velocity, so velocity equals, let's call it just two meters per second, just for simplicity, is triple that of a spherical body B. So the mass is three times the mass of B. So this is object A, mass of A, velocity of A, and the mass, let's say that's three kilograms. And let's say there's another mass, B, that only has a mass of one kilogram. Is So thus if a spherical body a with two parts of velocity is triple a spherical body B, which follows in the same right line, so they're going in the same direction, with 10 parts of velocity. So this thing's velocity is 10 meters per second. The motion of A to will be to B of sorry, the motion of A will be to that of B as 6 to 10. So if we do mass times velocity. So momentum equals mass times velocity. For the momentum of object A, that will be uh, 3 kilograms times 2 meters per second, giving us 6 kilograms meters per second. And the momentum of object B will be 1 kilogram times 10, giving us 10 kilogram meters per second of momentum. Suppose then their motions be of six parts and ten parts, and the sum will be 16 parts. They're going in the same direction, so if I add these up, the total momentum of my system will be 16 kilograms meters per second. Okay. Therefore, upon meeting, when they run into each other, if A acquires three or four, three, four or five parts of motion, B will lose as many. There's a transfer of momentum. So let's say that A, uh, let's say that object A gets, let's say, five parts of motion. So its momentum went from six kilograms meters per second to the momentum of A is now 11 kilograms meters per second. Well, then B will lose as many. So object B, it was it did have 10 kilograms meters per second of momentum, but it's uh, lost five, so now it's only got five kilograms meters per second of momentum. But the sum is still 16. Uh, the sum remaining will always be six of 16 parts as before. But then he goes on. If the body A acquires 9, 10, 11, or 12 parts of motion, Therefore, after meeting proceed with 15, 16, 17, or 18 parts, the body B, losing as many parts as A has got, will either proceed with one part, having lost nine, or stop if object A has acquired 10 parts of motion, so its total momentum of just object A is now 16, object B will stop completely. Or, if object A gains 11 parts to its motion, 
Well, object B is going to be going backwards. So it will go back with one part having not only lost its whole motion, but if I so may say, one part more, or it will go back with two parts because of the progressive motion of 12 parts is taken off. So basically what Newton is directly saying here is if these objects after the collision are still going in the same direction, we have to add up their momentas to get that total of 16. However, if object A, let's do the, uh, let's do the gaining 18 parts. Object A started with, uh, sorry, gains, uh, uh, which one on here? Gains 12 parts of the motion. So object A started with six kilograms meters per second of momentum, gains 12. So now object A has a momentum of 18 kilograms meters per second. Object B would have to be going backwards with a momentum of two kilograms meters per second. That would be the subtraction part. They're now going in opposite directions. So we have to subtract those momentas to properly account for what is the total momentum of this system. And so the sums of the conspiring motions, 15 plus one or 16 plus zero, and the differences of the contrary motions, 17 minus one and 18 minus two, will always be equal to 16 parts as they were before the meeting and reflection of the bodies. So I'm sorry that that was really, really wordy, but I really needed to iron out this point. For momentum in Newton's model of momentum, direction matters. If those objects are going in opposite directions, we have to subtract those momentas or equivalently say, if this is my positive direction and I've got an object moving this way, its momentum will be negative. Direction for momentum matters. Okay. So again, just kind of summarizing Isaac Newton's model of momentum. The definition, momentum is mass times velocity. Direction matters. So if the objects are going in the positive direction, we call that a positive momentum. If they're going in the negative direction, we call that a negative momentum. And this momentum is conserved when there are only internal forces acting on the system. What about the alternative model that it has again been proposed online? Well, here are some of the key features as I've been able to uh, understand them from you know, seeing these comments. The, their definition of momentum is that the momentum is equal to the mass times the magnitude of velocity. Basically, the mass times the speed of the object. And their claim is that momentum doesn't care about direction. I've heard this many, many times in, in comments and things like that. If I had two objects going in opposite directions, and let's say this one has 200 kilograms meters per second of momentum, and this one is going the opposite direction with 200 kilograms meters per second of momentum, their claim is that the total of this would be 400 kilograms meters per second of momentum. That's the total momentum of this system. We don't care about what direction the objects are going in. Another claim that they've made is that this momentum can be stored in things that are not moving. Even though momentum is mass times velocity, the claim is if all the particles that are moving inside of that uh, object, they store that momentum or something equivalent to momentum. And for example, a compressed spring will store that momentum. And when the spring uh, pushes back on those objects, it can release that momentum. Again, this is the claim from this proposed model online. And that this replaces the need um, for our textbook understanding of energy. Again, the claim from this group is that kinetic energy is just made up. It doesn't actually correspond to anything physical. We want to compare these two models side by side. Again, the differences, the key differences in these models as I see it is that in Newton's model, the model that's used in every physics textbook uh, uh, that's been written since you know Newton kind of came up with these these uh, uh, this formulation is that momentum direction matters we add momentas in the positive direction and we subtract momentas in the negative direction 
whereas this alternative model, momentum doesn't care about direction. Another key difference is that in the classical physics model, momentum is conserved when there are only internal forces acting on the objects. As long as all of those forces are internal, we're not getting any stored momentum in some other form or anything like that. Uh, during that interaction, as long as there are only internal forces, looking at the motions of those objects, even during the collision, that total momentum, as described, including direction, should stay the same. This alternative model, well, if something uh, compresses a spring, that spring can store some of the momentum. So the momentum of the objects would decrease in this particular way. So we're going to look at some specific experiments that test out these two claims. We're going to be using some of my motion sensors. There, were, there have been questions in the past of, are these motion sensors accurate? I just posted a video uh, testing out these motion sensors and showing that, yes, we can show that they're reliable as long as we're using the data that is low noise. We can say that uh, both objects are being tracked in the cases that we're going to be looking at. So again, they're reliable sensors, and we're going to look at specific cases that test out the differences in these models. Does direction matter with the properties of momentum? Can momentum be stored in something that's not moving, or is momentum just conserved as long as we are only looking at the internal forces? So let's set up the experiments and see which model comes out on top. So. Let's have a bit of a look at our experimental setup. We've got two carts, and they're each going to be tracked by one of the motion sensors. So we've got a motion sensor here, and we've got a motion sensor over here. And we're going to call this one cart one, and this one's going to be cart two. We're going to be able to change the masses of these carts. We're going to be able to change how they collide with each other. Right now I've got repelling magnets on both of them. And we're going to be doing this under a number of different circumstances to identify cases where these two models, the classical physics model of momentum and this alternative model of momentum, ideally look for cases where they make different predictions and see which one of them makes accurate predictions, which one matches with experiment. Uh, I did a previous video, I'll put a link to that here, um, testing out these motion sensors, even though they're aimed at each other, and even though we can sometimes get some interference, we can detect when we are getting interference with these sensors based on some really, really noisy velocity data. So if we see that noisy velocity data, well, we'll take another run. We won't include that highly suspect data. We'll only use clean data for these experiments. So let's get started with this. We're going to need to have the masses of these objects. So for the first trial, I thought cart one, I'm gonna add some masses to it. So let me grab this, oh, make sure we uh, zero this. And cart one has a mass of 558 grams. Cart two has a mass of 308 grams. Okay, so let's record those masses. Make sure that we don't miss anything. So mass one was 558 grams. Mass two was 308 grams. And we're going to also put that into our, uh, into Logger Pro. So we can actually measure on the fly what is the momentas, what are the momentas of these objects. So I've got 0.558 for mass one and 0 0.308 for mass two. And just to kind of note the kinds of measurements I'm making for momentum one, momentum one is just the mass of object one times the velocity of object one as measured by that sensor. Momentum two is the mass of object two times the velocity of object two. And this sensor, I've reversed the direction of this sensor. So both sensors are saying to the camera's right is the positive direction. We've got the total momentum, just saying momentum one plus momentum two. And again, if they're going in 
if they're going to the camera's left, those are going to read as negative momenta. So this model is using the Newton's classical physics model of uh, testing this momentum. And lastly, in case we want to actually measure this, we're also going to talk about kinetic energy. Now, I should mention that Newton's model didn't include anything about kinetic energy. That wasn't a formulation that was really well developed at the time. Uh, Newton did think that momentum was the most fundamental quantity of motion. And we really find that we need both momentum and energy to fully describe what's going to happen to these systems. But again, for this video, we're just going to focus on how these two models of momenta compare with each other. Okay, so let's set these up for a first run. Uh, also note that I have included these markers at 10 centimeter inter uh, intervals, and I'm also going to put some timestamps onto these videos. So if you don't believe the sensor measurements, you can use those times and these distances to actually measure what the velocities of these carts are by hand. You are welcome to do that if you think that these sensors aren't working, but let's do an initial data run. So I'm gonna start the sensor. Give this a little throw. Okay. So again, we've got some pretty good data. It gets a little noisy at the end when we lose tracking, but during, uh, just before, during, and after the collision, that momentas, uh, those velocity data seem quite stable, so I'm pretty happy with these results. So let's look at what we get for the momentas in each of these cases. So. Note that the momenta is on the bottom. We've got velocities on the top, momenta is on the bottom, and those momenta should just be the mass times the velocity. So, for example, for object one, its mass was 0.558 kilograms, and to get the velocity, sorry, to get the momentum, we multiply that by 0 0.308, and I got 0.172. This seems to be matching up. So. Momentum one was, uh, before the collision, was 0.127 for object one. Object two had nothing. So the total momentum, both the textbook model and the alternative model would agree that the total momentum that we're starting with is 0.172 kilograms meters per second. So let's put that into these windows here. So 0.172, 0.172. They both agree for this uh, before case. Okay. Well, let's look after. So just a little bit after that collision. Well, we've got velocity one, velocity two. If you want to kind of go through and verify that the computer is calculating the momentum on the bottom properly, you are welcome to do that. But we've got the momentum of object one is 0.051, momentum of object two is 0.120, and the total momentum is 0.171. And both the textbook model and the alternative model would agree with these because both of the carts were only moving in the positive direction. If everything is moving in the positive direction, then the textbook model and the alternative model actually give the same predictions. Okay. So for both of these cases, we get 0.171 for our final momenta, and we note that, well, 0.172 and 0.171, those are really close to each other. We know there is a little bit of friction on the track, so it's not quite isolated from the environment entirely, but this is a very good agreement, and both the textbook model and the alternative model in this case agree. So hopefully that puts to rest fears that these sensors are just giving nonsense answers because then both models are giving nonsense answers and that would be quite a coincidence. So I'm going to start changing some of the masses around. So right now this was the higher mass cart and this was the lower mass cart. I'm going to add some masses to cart two. I'm going to leave the mass of cart one the same but hopefully they should be around the same mass now. So let's actually see what this mass is. I'm going to move my camera, and once I put this on here, whoop, if it doesn't roll off, so 0.557 grams, so one gram shy of the other cart. So let me update these numbers for our next trial. So cart one is the same, cart two is 0.557, they're almost the same mass. 
and I'm also going to update that in the in Logger Pro. Okay. So again, that last case, everything was moving in the same positive direction, so we can't distinguish which model is is correct or incorrect because they're both making the same predictions. They both matched up in that case. So let's try another case, and we're going to start collecting and give it a throw. Okay, so let's scale this so we can actually see everything that's happening here. This one, the masses were almost the same, so we get a really clear instance of conservation of momentum in both of these cases. Let's look just before the collision. So just before the collision, basically object one is the only thing that has momentum, uh, 2.1, or sorry, 0.211 kilograms meters per second. And both of those models would agree with that total initial momentum. Looks like object two had just started to move, so that's 0.212. Both of those models would agree. After the collision, let's look at those two objects. Well, after the collision, it looks like we get uh, 0.206. And again, since they're both moving in the positive direction, uh, those and momentum one is basically zero. Uh, those would pretty much agree with each other, at least to within the noise. Okay. So again, we have a case where there were no objects that were significantly moving in the negative direction. We had good tracking on both of the carts, and since nothing was moving in the negative direction, we don't have a distinguishing feature between the textbook model and this alternative model. But let's say I add a little bit more mass to this second card. So I'm going to add more mass to this second card. Okay. So what are we going to get for this mass in this case? Well, let's take another look. So that looks like 806 grams. So just about 806 grams. So that is cart number two. Let's fill in that data. Cart one is still staying the same. Cart two is I forgot the number, just want to make sure I'm not messing that up. Uh, 806, all right. 806, we're going to update that on here as well. And now let's see what we get when we run these carts into each other. So we've updated that, and let's start taking some more data. So in this case, well, we've got an object that is now moving in the negative direction. Cart 1, after it hit cart 2, cart 1 started moving backwards. So now is when we're going to get some differences in these two models. So let's look, have a look at what we get. So just before the collision, well, there's only things moving in the positive direction. So both models would agree... If everything is moving in the positive direction, both models would agree the total initial momentum is 0.219, again, for both of those models. Okay. After the collision, we can again look at what those velocities are and what those momentas are. Now, in the textbook model, momentum one, we treat that as a negative momentum. So when we're adding these momentas up, I'm going to add up negative 0.036 plus positive 0.28258. Uh, and I get from that point, uh, I guess there's some rounding in here for, for the computer's model. Uh, I get around 0.221 or 0.222. But what would the alternative model give? Because again, that alternative model claims that momentum does not care about direction. When we are adding up momentas, we're always adding up positive values. So in this case, we would have to add positive 0.036 to positive 0.258 
and I get from that 0.294. So 0 0.294 when I combine those momentas as described in this alternative model. That does not give conservation of momentum. The textbook model, well, within the noise, those two momentas before and after the collision, those match up quite well. The alternative model, not looking so good. Let's try another. I'm actually going to remove some of the mass from this one so we can exaggerate this effect, uh, this reflecting back effect. So I'm going to remove these two masses. Now we're changing the mass of cart one. And let's measure this new mass. I'm going to tear that. And we're going to get a new mass for cart one. So now this is 309 grams for cart one. Cart two, we're going to leave that one the same. So cart one is 0 0.309. Cart two is still the 0 0.806. And let's look at what happens when we collide these together. I need to change my mass term in this one as well. 309, just making sure that that actually was 309, that I didn't get anything off there. 309, awesome. Okay, well, let's give this another throw. Okay, again, our velocity data looks really clean. We're not getting, except at the uh, very end, we're not getting any of these noisy spikes. We seem to be getting reliable data. But let's look at what we're finding from this reliable data. So, just before the collision. Well... We've only got object one moving in the positive direction, so both models would agree that this initial momentum is around 0.119 uh, kilograms meters per second. They both agree on that initial momentum. Okay. Afterwards, well, here's where we have another one of our differences because, again, the textbook model says if this object reflects backwards, we treat that as a negative momentum. Momentum of object one is negative 0.05 kilograms meters per second. Object two has a momentum of 0.169 kilograms meters per second. So if we add those up, we get 0.119. Momentum is conserved in the textbook model. In this alternative model, again, their claim is that momentum does not care about direction. So we'd have to add positive 0.05 plus positive 0.169, and I get positive 2.19. Sorry, positive 0.219. Those do not match. We do not get conservation of momenta with this alternative model. It does not seem to work. Okay. But we can test this out in additional cases. So I'm going to add some masses back onto this thing. We're going to go back to our original setup. Uh, let's say back to this setup where mass 1 was 0.558 and mass 2 is 0.806. And now instead of using the magnetic bumpers to keep these from running into each other, I'm going to remove those I'm going to remove those magnetic bumpers and switch that out for Velcro. Okay. So instead of bouncing off of, the, of each other, these objects are going to stick together. So I'm removing those, switching them with Velcro. This is going to slightly, slightly change the masses of the carts. Um, Let's make sure that we're not uh, changing the masses of the carts too much. So cart one, if we look at cart one, that is 547 grams. So a little bit less mass than we had before. So that is 0.547. Cart two, 
is going to have a mass of 794 grams. 794 grams for cart two. And let's change those corresponding values on here. So that is 547. This one is 794. Okay. Again, we need to be looking at cases where the objects sometimes are going in the negative direction. So I'm actually going to take these two objects and I'm going to throw them at each other and see how that objects how those objects move uh, afterwards. Okay. So let's give this a try. We'll see if we get uh, good data or if it's a little bit too noisy here. Uh, let's give this a try. Okay. So let's auto scale both of these. And notice, other than the collision where the objects are actually moving a little bit back and forth, uh, so that's not noise, it's the actual physical motion of those two objects, we can see the momentum, uh, the momentums of both objects before and after. We can look at that collision. Let's see what actual numbers we get for this case. So let's highlight both of these values. And just before the collision, just before the collision, according to the textbook model, where again, the objects that are moving in different directions, we have to account for the signs of those momentas, that total momentum would be negative 0.088 kilograms meters per second. The alternative model, where there is no such thing as negative momentas, we'd have to add those positive values, the momentum of object one and the momentum of object object two as positive values. So that would be positive 0.166 plus positive 0.253. So that gives me 0.419 for the total initial momentum of this system. What about after the collision? Again, it looks like we have some, we have good tracking of both of the carts. They're both moving with the same velocity. Uh, once that kind of vibrational motion uh, settles down a little bit, they've got the same motion. So let's look at what happens in this case. According to the textbook model, well, if we look just after the collision, so right after the collision, as close after as we can get, that total momentum adds up to negative 0.089, right beside the total momentum that we started with. But in the alternative model, again, the alternative model claims that the direction of momentum doesn't matter. So we'd have to treat these both as positive values. And if we treat those both as positive values, so 0.035 plus 0.055, we get 0 0.09, 0 0.09 kilograms meters per second. In the alternative model, the initial momentum and the, to the final momentum do not match up. So all of these have been examples of how if the object is moving in the opposite direction, this alternative model of momentum where the momentum doesn't care about direction, it fails to match the data. But there's another way that we can test this out. So instead of having these things hit and stick together, I'm going to use the spring on here to have these objects spring off of each other. So. If you look underneath there, you can see that right in there, there is a spring. So when this object hits, it's going to partially compress that spring. And then that spring is going to um, push back and uh, cause them to bounce off of each other somewhat. Okay. So let's see what happens in this case. So again, I'm going to throw these carts at each other. They're going to bounce off of each other instead of sticking together this time. And let's see what happens in this particular case. So again, I'm going to throw these two objects at each other and let's see what we get. So I think we lost tracking. Uh, the tracking was not quite even on both of them, uh, not quite lined up at the same time because notice this one seems to hit a little bit before this one. 
Uh, all of the other cases, the timings were, were matched up. So I'm going to try this one again. So let's, uh, again, we have some evidence of noise in the data that these times weren't quite matched up. But let's give this another try. So, and three, two, one. There, that one seems to match up much better. So let's zoom in on this data. Okay. And let's look at what's happening. So before the collision, how would we measure these momentums? Well, we still have our 0 0.547. We didn't change anything with the masses. All that we changed was we were using this spring to launch the objects off of each other instead of using the uh, instead of using the Velcro to make them stick together or the magnets to have them spring off of each other. In our textbook model for momentum, oh, sorry, I moved off that point. Let's go right there. In our textbook model of momentum, the total initial momentum is negative 0.099 kilograms meters per second. But again, in this alternative model, we can't we we can't have negative momentum. So we'd have to add these up as positive values. So we'd add 0.169 plus 0.268. And I got 0.437 for that. After the collision. So after the collision, if we look at the Again, the standard textbook model of this, our total momentum ends up being negative 0.094. Again, in good agreement with our initial momentum, even though we have different ways of having these things run into each other, in all of these cases, momentum is conserved when there are only internal forces acting on that system, only forces between those two objects. And it can be any kind of force. We've used magnets to have these objects uh, bounce off of each other. We've used Velcro to have these objects hit and stick together. That's still just an internal force between objects inside of this system. Now we're using this spring. There might be some friction on the spring, but that would still be, even if there were friction on the spring, that would still be internal to our system. So momentum would still be conserved no matter what interaction force is acting between these two objects as long as they are only forces just acting between these two objects. I'm not pushing on another one. Uh, the track is level, so we don't have gravity, uh, a part of gravity acting on one and not the other. Momentum is conserved in the Newtonian classic physics model. Momentum is conserved whenever there are only internal forces acting on the system. But Going back to the alternative model, what would the momentum be after this collision? Well, there's no negative momentum, so we'd have to add up positive 0.199 plus positive 0.105, and I get uh, 0.304 when I do that. Once again, in this alternative model, whenever we have any object going in the negative direction, this alternative model fails to accurately describe what's happening to this system. This claim that momentum does not care about direction, that doesn't hold up when, when we're doing actual experiments. Okay. But there's another thing that we can note about this, because during that collision, for part of that collision, this spring was compressed. And we actually had, we were lucky enough to get good tracking throughout that entire collision, when that spring was partially compressed and when that spring was now letting go. But during that entire motion, notice that at every single point in there, the total momentum was staying the same. That black line for total momentum was staying the same. Even when the spring was compressed, when we were looking at the momentas of the two carts, their total momentum was staying the same. Momentum is not being stored in this spring. If the spring was storing momentum, we would expect that when the spring is partway through its compression during this collision, we would expect to see a change in that momentum and then 
Well, that momentum would be returned back to the system when the spring uh, went back to its relaxed state. But that's not what we see. Springs do not store momentum in the way that this alternative model predicts. Let's do one more case of this uh, just to verify. I'm going to just push one cart at the other and we're going to see how, again, that total momentum, even during the collision, even when this spring is being partially compressed, that total momentum is still staying the same. So let's do one more example of this. Here we go. Okay. So if we zoom in on that, and let's specifically zoom in on this part here. Again, during that collision, when the objects are, the system is partially compressed, we're not getting this drop in momentum because the spring does not store momentum. However, if we were to look at the kinetic energy of the system, so let's highlight that exact same section. Let's highlight that exact same section, zoom in on that and look at what's happening to the energy of the system. So let me set this to zero, that part to zero. And let's set this part to, let's say, 0.1, okay? This is a measure of how much kinetic energy the system is storing, okay? The system has. So before the collision, we've got some kinetic energy. After the collision, we still have most of the kinetic energy. Again, there's a little bit of friction on that uh, spring that's gonna remove some of the energy from the system. But during that collision, we get this significant drop in the total kinetic energy of the carts. When that spring is compressed, it's not storing momentum, it is storing energy. So again, this alternative model makes the claim that springs store momentum. This data shows that they don't. It's not momentum being stored, it's energy being stored. When the spring compresses, some of that kinetic energy is being converted to spring potential energy. And when the spring uh, launches those objects again, it gives, again, most of that energy back to the system. So overall, what does this tell us about how we can compare models? First, if I wanna compare these models to figure out which one is viable, I need to find conditions where these two models or any two models make different predictions for the outcome of an experiment. And then we have to actually do that experiment and see which of our models matches with the data. In this case, all of our cases, no matter what kinds of objects that we had running into each other, whether we used the magnets to have the objects interact, whether we had Velcro having the objects stick together, whether we had this spring as the force that's acting on the two objects, as long as those forces, as long as the forces in this system are all internal and there's no external forces, momentum is conserved. Direction matters in this conservation of momentum. So if I've got an object moving in the positive direction, we're gonna call that a positive momentum. If I've got an object moving in the negative direction, we're gonna call that a negative momentum. All of those predictions matched with the data to a high level of accuracy. Like, again, we were never more than a few percent off of keeping all of that momentum just before and just after the collision. On the other hand, considering this alternative model, when everything was going in the same direction and we didn't have to worry about that uh, objects going in the negative direction, it did match up. But as soon as an object was moving in the opposite direction, this model of momentum failed. It did not give conservation of momentum like the proponents of this model seem to think it should. We also found that if we use a spring for this collision, during the collision itself, the total momentum is staying the same. The spring does not store momentum. What it does store is kinetic energy. So 
again, I hope this is a clear way of delineating between testing the predictions of two competing models and using the data to determine which of those models is actually viable. And I hope I've demonstrated that this alternative model is not viable. The classical physics, you know, Isaac Newton's model of momentum, the kind that is taught in every reputable physics class, that one is supported by the data. All of this data that we've took supports that model. So that's it for this session. Uh, again, I hope this was interesting. If you have questions, please throw those into the comments. I'm sure I'm going to get some comments back about this one. But uh, again, be respectful when you're, you know, talking or responding when you're posting or responding to any comments and I'll see you in the next video.